government has filed 11 grounds notice of appeal against the acquittal of the Senate President Bukola Saraki by the Code of Conduct Tribunal on false assets declaration and other related offenses. The charges were preferred against Saraki, a former governor of Pora State. We have a lawyer in Nebe Efiong with talks to share some legal perspectives on this development. Glad to have you join us on TVC News Hour. My pleasure being with you today. I, I have done quite some interviews, you know, lawyers and the like. Now, is there not, not a real danger in our paradigm when if EFCC loses a case, people are quick to declare the, uh, the failure of the fight of corru against corruption because I'm sure you'll agree, it isn't over until the case gets to the Supreme Court. I mean, just like a football match, isn't over until 90 minutes. Isn't there that danger of always saying that they're losing the fight when you can take it further? Well, of course, I think the, the first point to make is that Nigeria is not a country where they fight against corruption or moral infractions is popular. We do not have that consensual citizenry who are committed to a decent country. It's only an infraction, a small percentage of Nigerians that are truly committed to ending corruption. So it is not surprising when we seem to see euphoria, mass celebration, whenever it looks as if there is a setback in the campaign against corruption. So I think more or less it's a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing. It doesn't really depend on the merits of the cases. Mm. What you see, like comments on social media, is an indication of the cultural situation that we have found ourselves as a country. Isn't that dangerous? So in, in uh, the CCT's ruling that uh, the prosecution uh, failed in doing its job, now, the, the, the presidency is saying that uh, the owners actually should lie on the, uh, in this case, uh, the Senate President Saraki, he is the uh, defendant, to prove that uh, he did not do anything against the code of conduct, uh, you know, of public affairs, of public um, officers, something that needs to be done. Uh, it should be noted that what we call a no case omission in law, mm -hmm is an instance where after the close of the prosecution's case, three things happen. Mm -hmm. And in the event that any of these happen, the defendant or the accused person is not required to enter his defense. What are the situations? Section 303 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015, mm -hmm and a long line of decisions of courts, including even early cases like Ibezi Aku and Commissioner of Police, decided by the Supreme Court as far back as 1963. It has clearly been outlined that a no-case omission can only succeed, one, whereupon after the close of the prosecution's case, it is apparent that the fundamental ingredients, the basic ingredients of the offense, or what we call elements of the offense, have not been proved, they are lacking. Two, that the evidence adduced has been discredited mm -hmm. under cross-examination. Or that even by the nature of the evidence, the evidence is so fundamentally flawed that no reasonable tribunal or court will rely on it. So what the tribunal or court is required to look at in a no-case submission is not really the guilt or the innocence of the defendant. No. What they are required to look is, is there legally admissible evidence calling for explanation from the defendant? So in this case, what is the situation? There? What the CCT did in the Syracuse case, if, if time allows us to examine them one after the other, mm -hmm. in my humble view, it was a clear miscarriage of justice. And I, I will start by, by even looking at some of the reasons adduced for holding the Senate President's no case submission. Mm -hmm. It has been said that the Senate President was not invited and that the failure by the Code of Conduct Bureau to invite him before the charge were preferred was fundamental to the case. That is unfortunate. Why is it unfortunate? Mm -hmm. The reason is obvious. This is an issue that the Senate President himself had raised.
had read as an application before the CCT. An issue that the CCT had ruled on on the 24th of March 2016. An issue that after Saragi had lost at the tribunal, he had gone to the Court of Appeal to contest. And the Court of Appeal clearly said that is not the position. All right, all right. L let me just stop you there briefly mm -hmm. and take on another area of this whole imbroglio. Uh, let's talk about technicalities as against what lawyers would call substantive matters, which of course made it an okay submission. What is your honest view about the fact, Amanda Obani, one of my friends, a lawyer, he said that it's really a sorry state when we talk more about technicalities than about the substance of the matter. I want you to give your honest opinion about this. Both state, in my view remains that as far as this ruling is concerned, as far as the CCT ruling in this instance is concerned, both technical and substantive justice were not done. I do not agree that this was a case of technical justice because even the requirements of technicalities were not met. When you, for, 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 for a, example, you said that the Syracuse asset declaration form, the original was not tendered. For God's sake, that is strange to law because the prosecution had tendered the certified true copy. And by virtue of Section 102 of the Evidence Act 2011, CCT, certified true copy, is admissible. Okay, now, and even the original was shown to the tribunal and the defense. It was compared. The federal government is asking for two prayers. One, that the CCT ruling... No, first off, let's, let's get this clear. The two prayers by the FG seeking a setting aside of the CCT ruling and another uh, calling upon Saraki to enter his defense. This is what the federal government is asking for right now. What are the... Uh, should this be granted in the first place? It is for the Court of Appeal to determine. What I can say mm -hmm. as a lawyer is that there are appealable issues, not just because this is about the Senate president, but because of the fundamental nature of the issues of law that arises, for example, the issue of onus of proof, whose obligation it is. Where there is an allegation, where there is an assertion that the content of asset declaration form is false by virtue of paragraph 11, part one of the fifth schedule to the Constitution, which deems, he said, once the CCB found uh, the content of the form to be false, it is deemed that the provisions have been violated. So I, I seem to be persuaded by the argument that Saraki has the evidential burden to show that the Aaron. content of his forms was actually correct. So interesting because to discuss. Because presumption of innocence in this instance should be looked at vis-a-vis -vis the provisions of paragraph 11, of the fiscal to the constitution. I'll have mm. to stop you there. <laughs> Sorry about the time. But it was quite interesting discussion. Yes, indeed. The All discussion, right, uh, of course, continues. In Ebeher, in Ebeher, a lawyer.